All right, guys. Hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, this session will be a little bit shorter than usual, I guess, because there's not as much to talk about this week. Um, thank you for joining and taking the time to watch. Disclaimer, as always, uh, do your own research. Everything discussed here is for informational purposes only. Yada, yada, yada. So for the uh, week ahead, economically, we have a little bit of data coming out. Not a, not a lot. Tomorrow, we have the Chicago National Activity Index coming out at 8.30 a.m., followed by the household data at noon. Tuesday, we have existing home sales, which will be an interesting number to look at, 10 a.m. Keep an eye on that. Uh, previous was 5.86 million. Wednesday, we have existing home sales and market services PMI at 9.45 a.m. Thursday, we have initial jobless claims, both regular state and regular end state, as well as continuing jobless claims, regular state, federal and state, and also new home sales. Uh, all that data is at 8.30 a.m. on Thursday. And then Friday, we have durable goods orders and core capital goods orders as well, which are important to look at too. So the big ones to look at are obviously gonna be household debt noon tomorrow, um, existing home sales 10 a.m. on Tuesday, and then Friday, the uh, durable goods orders as well. Let's see, add someone else here. Um, yeah, this week, Tuesday, the big event of the week is Tesla Investor Day slash Battery Day. Um, a lot of Tesla bulls have been waiting for this uh, event for a while now. And it's coming at uh, 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday. So that'll be 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, after market close, obviously. So you can't really trade the event uh, live. But they're expected to announce some advancements in their um, battery technology, potentially discussing a new type of battery cell that they are developing in-house. Uh, Tesla is targeting more than a 70% improvement in the energy density of their cells and improved power density as well. They currently purchase their 2170 cells from Panasonic and pretty much they're trying to branch away from having a supplier for their batteries. They want to make their own batteries in-house and then eventually get to selling those other, other um, car manufacturers as well, right? That's where they want to branch out uh, into a new, new revenue stream, right? Um, EV sales right now only comprise approximately 3.5% of total global auto sales, which is a very, very small amount of global auto sales, right? There's a lot of room for growth, and that's why we're seeing these new corporations come out. Um, you know, like, like Neo, for example. Um, you have Lucid Motors. Uh, th there are a lot of different ones, uh, many in China that, that are popping up now. And then you have... Some of the, some of the um, existing audio manufacturers are pivoting now toward EV sales. I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard about uh, GM investing $2 billion into Nikola uh, a couple of weeks ago, which seems to be you know, possibly a not, not a great, a great investment based upon the reports that have come out since then. Um, but yeah, again, you know, there's a lot of room for growth in the EV sales um, segment globally, and it's important to realize that. It's also important to remember that uh, though Elon Musk promises rapid advancements in, um, or achievements in their, in their processes and products, um, they often take a long time to, to transpire, right? So remember that too, that you know, whatever he talks about, it might be you know, two, three years away. He might promise it's a year away, but it might take two years, right? That's a very, very uh, common thing that happens with, um, with Musk, right? Um, oops. And then um, looking at the analyst price targets, um, on the high side, we have 566. Um, and on the, whoops, on the low side, we have 19, right? So you can see the polarity in analysts, right? They're, um, <laughs> they're looking at you know, a low price target of $19 a share versus a high target of 566. That's a huge deviation, right? Using the median target, you have 307.50. Um, which is below the current price by about uh, 33% roughly. And then the current price is obviously 449.50. Um, that was after hours on Friday, what it was trading at. Um, to the right, you can see their car sales by quarter, right? You can see that um, they're selling about um, 90,000 cars right now quarterly, which is a, you know, a lot compared to what they were doing a few years ago, but it's still not a lot. And not a lot given that they're worth you know about 420 billion dollars as a corporation right now right uh which is almost double that market cap of um toyota right it's it's a very rich valuation and i'm going to actually be talking about the bullish case versus the bearish case on tesla a little bit 
So if we just, you know, off the top of my head, just thinking about it a little bit, right? Like what are the pros and cons of Tesla, right? Well, the pros are that they have one of the most um, enigmatic CEOs of all time in Elon Musk, right? He's, you know, comparable to Steve Jobs in that regard. And he's, you know, he's a, he's a visionary, right? He's a revolutionary and a visionary, right? And people want to get behind someone like that. <clears throat> and I agree with that, you know, amazing CEO. Um, the counterpoint to that is that, you know, he tweets a lot and he's also focused on numerous different ventures at the same time, which can be seen as a counterpoint uh, or a bearish argument, right? Um, the pros for their market they're in, which are EVs, are that the market's growing, right? Um, that's, as, as I said, said over there before, um, EVs only comprise about three and a half percent of total global auto sales right now, right? And that can balloon to, you know, possibly 30%, 50% eventually to, to a point where eventually perhaps we have no more internal combustion engine cars, you know, ICEs, right? And that means a Tesla being, you know, uh, at the forefront of the tech could lead the way. But you can discount the current um, incumbents in the auto um, manufacturing industry because they're large, they have deep pockets. And when they do ramp up production and get um, some good cars, cars that people want to buy or create some good cars that people want to buy, that will represent a big threat to Tesla as well, right? Because right now Tesla sells, you know, pretty high price cars. Like in Canada, for example, the lowest price uh, Model 3 you can get is a, a, about $70,000, right? Which is double the price of the top uh, model, um, highest selling car in Canada, which is a Honda Civic, right? So you got to think about that too, that can people afford to buy these cars? If Tesla gets down to, you know, if they create a model that's down at, you know, 25K or 30K, that's where I'm really interested in looking at the stock longer term. But again, you gotta remember you're paying a 420 billion valuation right now for the current company. And though there are a lot of optimists out there saying that, you know, they could have, you know, an army of robo taxis, they could allow people to have their own robo taxis, they could sell, sell batteries, they, they could um, be a large power company um, in the future as well, or, or an energy company. Um, that all may be the case, but right now, given what they're doing, they're, they're priced to absolute perfection and above, right? So I like to look at you know, both sides of the coin. I do believe in the company. They're, um, they're you know, a very innovative company. They're American made and that's a great thing because you know, the US needs uh, productivity coming from within the United States, right? The, they need to create products in the US, which is very important. Um, and Tesla could lead the way in that regard, right? But again, you want to you want to make sure you're looking at the value um, of what you're getting for your money, right? So as Buffett always says, price is what you pay, value is what you get. And in that regard, I do think Tesla is very, very richly valued. But I also do like the company given the products and Elon Musk, right? Uh, another counterpoint would be that obviously their balance sheet is not great. And then a uh, further counterpoint is that you know people have argued that <clears throat> perhaps in the future they'll they'll be the largest um, auto manufacturer in, in the world. Well, that would require them to increase their um, current sales <clears throat> by about 20 times, right? Because uh, right now Toyota is selling about 10.7 million cars a year. So just think about that. Um, here's a little chart of Tesla's, um, or t Tesla's chart over here. You can see where the, where the median price target is at 307.50, right around this support area after that initial pop back up to, um, back then what was an all-time high at around 350 uh, post split. Um, I think battery day will probably be a sell, sell the news event on Tuesday, but again, I'm not playing it myself. So take it for what it's worth. Um, the, uh, the EMs and PMs on Tesla this week are pretty wide. I believe they are, let's just see quickly, uh, for the week ahead. Whoops. Whoops. Oh, here it is. Um, Tesla is over here. So we have a hundred and two dollar and 95 cent potential move or 23.3%, which is by far the largest uh, potential percentage change of any ticker on the list. So the upper side would be around 543.92 and the lower side would be right at uh, 338.02. So a huge, huge um, variance in potential prices for the week, right? Uh, back to the chart again on, on Tesla, right? So looking at this again, um, you know, I think at some point you're going to see it retest the 200 mark, uh, perhaps in the next six months. And that will be, you know, where it'd be an interesting spot to maybe sell some cash secured puts, given that there's a lot of volatility in the stock, which reflects in the option pricing, right? Um, 
yeah, that's what I have to talk about with regard to Tesla. But um, yeah, keep an eye on that Tuesday, uh, 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Obviously, you can't trade it after hours unless you're trading uh, stock after hours. But um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday should see a lot of volatility, right? Earnings for the week ahead. There aren't a lot, but there are a few big names. There's AutoZone on Tuesday before open. There's Nike after close. Um, on Wednesday, we have General Mills in the morning before open. And then on Thursday, you have CarMax uh, prior to open as well. You also have Jubil Circuit. And then uh, after close, you have Costco and uh, Trip.com as well. So keep an eye on those. We'll be discussing those in the uh, EMs and PMs for the week as well. Uh, ticker analysis for SPY for the week. Current price, 331.52. The EM for the week is 730 or 2.2%. The PM for the week is 985 or 3%. The upper potential move is 341.37. And the lower potential move is 321.67, which would almost fill that gap right around 320 area, right? Um, so we are expecting a lot more volatility this week as well. Last week, we had a pretty wide range. Uh, we had a low range of 329. Uh, area to a high of 342. So we had a top to bottom range last week of about $14, or sorry, $13 um, top to bottom, which is a pretty wide range on uh, SPY. It was about a 3.5% a range. <clears throat> Looking at the NASDAQ, uh, which was breaking down hard last week, tech got clobbered, uh, especially the big names. You know, you had Microsoft breaking down below 200 on Friday, you had Apple filling the gap at 106, which we'll look at in a sec. Um, you had Amazon breaking below 3,000. Facebook got absolutely smoked. It was down uh, from um, 275 area down to almost 250 uh, last week. So a lot of the big names are getting smacked right now, and that could bode uh, poorly for any bulls in the market because if those big names break down, look out below, right? You know, not much else is going to be you know, propping the market up than those big uh, fang man names, right? Um, so for triple Qs for the week, current price 26707. The EM for the week is 992 or 3.7%. The PM for the week is 1302 or 4.9%. The upper move would be 280.09 and the lower move would be 254.05. Um, for the Russell for the week, IWM, uh, current price 153.50. EM for the week 429 or 2.8%. PM for the week 579 or 3.8%. The upper move would be 159.29 and the lower move would be 147.71. And if you notice on the chart, it's kind of consolidating in this range between 150 and 160, right? So when it starts breaking in other direction, either below 150 sharply or above 160 sharply, I'll be interested in going long or short or long rather. Uh, short if it goes below 150, long if it goes above 160, right? Because that would signal a, um, a new trend break to the upside or downside, right? Um, from last week, and again, thank you very much to, to Frankie for providing this. Uh, we have analysis for 29 tickers and so one second, I'm going to mute someone. Uh, there we go. That's all right. Um, so for the week ahead, we have, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, that was from last week, right? Here we go. Yeah. Sorry. So we had Adobe's earning last week and FedEx's earnings last week as well. Um, for the week, 26 out of 29 tickers close inside of, of the PM. Eight out of 29 tickers breached the PM temporarily, and 14 out of 29 tickers closed green on the week. <clears throat> so the key takeaway here was that volatility was overpriced this past week, and it should continue to rise into the November election period, making it an optimal time to sell premium when, when the uh, circumstances are right, right? And again, it is prudent to wait for the PMs to hit prior to entering credit positions, and spreads are recommended on debit positions given the elevated IV, right? So again, the election is November 3rd. We are now um, less than a month and a half away from that. And as we approach, you're gonna see an elevation in implied volatility. Um, you know, obviously as, as uh, Trump or Biden take the lead in the polls, right? Um, for the week ahead, we have um, Costco and Nike reporting earnings and then Tesla with their battery day as previously discussed. So Costco has a, um, a PM in other direction of 5.8%. <clears throat> that would take them up to 355.46 or down to 316.36. Nike has a PM of 8.5%. 
that would bring them to a high of 124.38 or, or a low of the week of 104.90. And then Tesla, as previously discussed, has the largest move by far uh, in, in terms of PM for the week, 543.92 on the upside and 338.02 on the downside um, for a total move of 102.95 in either direction, right? So you can expect that to be exceeded. Uh, you know, I, I, would, I, would, I would expect that it gets exceeded um, this week. You might see like, you know, a 120 move in either direction, a lot of volatility. You might see a hit of the, of the upper move and then a, a hit of the, of the lower move as well, right? It's very possible or vice versa, right? So keep that in mind. Um, also, Walmart took a stake in uh, TikTok, 7.5%, um, and Oracle took a stake of 12.5% uh, in TikTok as well. So that was discussed, I think, uh, today. I, 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 I read that on CNBC. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much that'll move Walmart, given that uh, a lot of investors were expecting a larger investment. Uh, but we'll see what happens with their stocks this week, respectively, right? It's so, um, Oracle and Walmart. Trade idea for the week, cash secured puts on Apple. So looking at the gap fills, as mentioned last week, I was looking at that first gap fill at 106 area. We filled it on Friday, <coughs> which was beautiful. Um, I'm looking for, the, for a further gap fill right now at 96 area um, in the shorter term. So the idea for the week would be to sell cash secured puts on Apple at the 95 strike for October 16th, the monthly expiration. And looking at the volatility curve for October OPEX, you see that while it is lower than it was a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago, sorry, um, it is still pretty high at 46.7%, whereas the norm is around 32%. <clears throat> so there's a lot of uh, premium to be had there. And the idea would be to sell the 95 strike cash secured put for $1.51, or sorry, 55 at the, um, at the midpoint, right? The net credit received would be $1.55, which is also your maximum profit. Your break even price would be the 95 strike minus your credit amount of 155, which would be 93.45. Maximum profit is a credit receipt, as I just said. It is a good idea to wait for the lower PM uh, of a given week to fill prior to selling the cash secured put, because you're gonna get more premium, obviously, or you can sell further down if you wanted to, for example, sell the, sell the 90 strike or the 85 strike, you can do that too, right? But if you don't mind owning Apple at 93.45, the trade is available as is, right? Maximum potential loss is $9,345 if Apple were to go to zero, uh, which is very, very improbable. I never say impossible, but I'll say, you know, it's almost impossible, right? <clears throat> um, the possible adjustments could be to use a put ratio spread on a further decline below 95 um, to reduce your risk, right? And that would, that would look like potentially, um, we'll actually look, look at that in a sec. Um, but additionally, you could sell covered calls if assigned, which would turn the strategy into the, into the wheel strategy. Collateral of 90, uh, 93, 000, sorry, uh, 9345 would be required to take assignment of 100 shares of Apple, which is the aim of the strategy, right? <clears throat> And as always, uh, any questions you guys have, please uh, email me at nick, nick at optionfinity.com or uh, post co comments on the video itself. And obviously like and, and subscribe if you don't mind as well. Um, looking at, one second, I'm just going to change screens right now. So looking at the option chain, you can see <clears throat> that if you did a put ratio, for example, that would look something like this where you would perhaps buy a 90 strike put, for example, right? And then sell two of the 88 strike puts, right? So you shorted the 95 strike, so now you own the stock at, you know, let's say 93.45, which is uh, what you'd own it, at, own it at with the cash secure put. You could then purchase the 90 strike put for about 82 cents, sell two of the 85 strike puts against it, creating a ratio spread here. And effectively, you'd have a $5 window over here where you have a net credit of about um, seven, eight cents over here. And your maximum loss would occur at, um, at 80 bucks or below, right? Uh, because essentially what would happen is that you own the, the 90 put over here, which, which, which would hedge your 100 shares on Apple. They, they were assigned to you if you um, sold the cash secure put over here. And then if it fell below 85, um, you'd have two short, short puts over here which one of which would, would negate your, um, your long put over here, but keep in mind that you own uh, 100 shares too, right? So 
even though your, your delta risk um, on a position is neutral overall, because overall your position would be um, a delta of roughly negative, uh, what is this, negative 0 0.01. Um, because you own 100 shares, if you were assigned on the 95 strike put, um, you would actually be uh, delta positive 100 shares, right? So keep that in mind too. Um, your break even would be at around 80 over here. It should be a small little augmentation to your hedge, um, assuming that you believe it would stay above 85, right? Because that would give you um, probably a potential of $5 down to 85 on the free put over here. Anything below that would be gravy up until the 80 strike over here, right? And um, that's pretty much it for the, um, for the trade of the week. Again, if you have any questions, email me or post a comment. And uh, I'm going to cut it off over here, but we'll stay live with everyone else. Whoops, uh, one sec. Let me stop.